Hello, everyone. Welcome to Design for Governance series, AC305, or this is actually the architecture series. We have already discussed this. We are not getting into the engineering or uh, deep dive into the resources, but we are trying to understand the approach for the architecture how to design things. Uh, we have, we started with the very first module design for governance. And there are various tools, uh, various resources that will help us for this governance. And we have covered all these uh, management group subscription. It is more like design for management group, design for subscription, design for resource group, tags, policies. The two things are left in this series are backend blueprints. However, you could also use many other stuff for the governance. For example, you could utilize security center. They have the compliance tab there. Anywho, we are going with the syllabus of 305. So let's carry on with the RBAC. So from the architectural perspective, because a lot of detail we have, we have already covered in various other videos that we have created and talked about. Uh, and a lot more is coming, but this series, I want to keep it absolutely for how to use the resource to design purpose, right? Alrighty, so <clears throat> let's try, let's start with the RBEC. So, what is RBEC? We need to understand this first. As always, we don't talk about things until you understand what it is. Best way to learn. My opinion. All right, RBEC, Role-Based Access Control, Azure RBEC. Well, this allows you to grant access to Azure resources that you control. We have seen this. This, this comes from Azure AD and whenever we go and sign up for the Azure, we always get the Azure AD and we create our users groups there and give access to them. That's what the RBAC is. And uh, we have covered these things in detail in other videos as well. So let's jump to the design considerations because now we know what RBAC is. It's a access control. So, what we need to uh, consider, what we need to keep in our mind before apply RBEC or how we should actually uh, approach for the access control for any design or any architecture. So to <clears throat> understand that first, we need, to, we need to keep in mind, this is, this is an allow model, RBEC. RBEC is, uh, allow model. Azure RBEC allows you to perform actions if you have that permissions through RBEC. So it is an allow model. For example, a role assignment could grant you read permission to a resource group. You are only allowed to read, nothing else. But if you need more permission, maybe a write permission, then we need to explicitly allow you to write or apply those permission on your service principle or your ID, UID. So it is an allow model. We need to understand that. This will help you to define your RBIC strategy. Now, how, how we usually apply the RBIC <clears throat> We try to assign at the highest scope level that meets the requirement, okay? Don't get confused with least privileged principle here. We'll cover both. So right now, it is for the ease of management, we apply at the highest scope level. If you remember, the hierarchy is management group, inside the management group, could be, then subscription, then resource group, and then resources. So our <clears throat> first, 
first step is to accurately define the role definition and related permissions. And then assign roles to users. You can assign roles to the users, groups and service principles. We're not talking about the best practices. I know <laughs> if you're listening, you would be saying, don't apply on users, apply on groups, but we will cover best practice later. So lastly, first we got the role definition permission, then we applied, assigned to the service principle or identity, and then scoped the roles. Now this scoping is what I was talking about at the highest level. It could be management group, subscription, resource group, and resources. Okay, but make sure the identities on which you're applying are the one who supposed to have that access at that highest level. Okay, so highest, I should write scope, would give you ease of management for sure. And then least privileged principle. Privileged principle what they need, only assign uh, permissions that they need, not more than that. You need to keep that in mind. We do have, uh, uh, let's talk about a few best practices because this is bothering me now. I talked about user and group. So the very first best practice is this. Uh, try not to apply uh, permissions on the user directly, but on the groups, okay? And least privilege principle is also one of the best practice that you should keep in mind. Now, another thing is you should limit the number of subscription owners. Y you need to know who should have the access of ownership on the subscription. You should not just apply the permission or our back to the entire group with the people who don't need that much permission. If we go a little deeper, not only our back, we do have other services like Azure AD, privileged identity management that could help you for the governance, right? So that's what the RBAC is, uh, simple and sweet. And I think we should jump to the blueprint. And I, I hope this, this will help you to design the governance, you need to keep these things in mind and work accordingly. Now, blueprints, what is, what is the Azure blueprints? Well, don't get confused. That's why I wrote here a difference between like what blueprint is doing that we cannot do with ARM or Terraform. So there must be some kind of difference. That's why Azure Group, Microsoft talks a lot about Azure Blueprint, specifically in governance sec section. So this Blueprint lets you define a repeatable set of governance tools and standard Azure resources that your organization requires. So it doesn't only go and create the resources like any other IEC tool, but you could also apply governance like RBAC policies and compose it in Blueprint, right? So in a nutshell, Blueprint is a package related to the implementation of Azure Cloud services, security, and design. And it is just like any other ISC can be reused to maintain consistency and compliance. Okay, now, <clears throat> to dig it further, this blueprint service is designed to help with environment setup, like deploying resources along with security and, and uh, other stuff, as I said. This, this setup also, uh, contains same thing that could be deployed through ARM templates, right? A resource manager template or ARM template is a document 
that doesn't exist natively in Azure. We need to either stored locally or in source control. And this template gets used for deployments of one or more Azure resources. But once those resources deploy, there is no active connection or relationship to the template. It doesn't happen with Blueprint. With Blueprint, the relationship between the Blueprint definition, which is what should be deployed, definition, and the assignment, Blueprint assignment, which is deployed, what was deployed, is preserved. Okay, this connection supports improved tracking and auditing of deployments. That's why it's a tool of governance. Blueprint can also upgrade several subscription at once that are governed by the same Blueprint. All right, so these, this small video is about RBAC and the, and the Blueprints. And from next video, we'll jump for designing, I hope like the next module is authentication because design for governance is, is covered pretty well. We talked about uh, high level, but pretty accurate stuff that, that is usually considered while designing. So in uh, next video, we'll start talking about designing authentication and authorization solutions. And a lot of Azure AD will come into the picture and a lot of other uh, tools that we have already covered in governance come again. So till then, take care, goodbye. Let's meet in another video. Bye-bye.